Thank you, Georgie Marching Band. It wouldn't be the same without you being here. And uh, thank everyone for coming today. This is an extraordinary day for USC. When we began this process, our goal was to find the right leader for USC and our football players. It was never our goal to change the landscape of college football with one of the biggest moves in the history of the game, but we did exactly that. We are so thrilled to welcome Lincoln Riley, his incredible wife, Caitlin, and their special daughters, Sloan and Stella, to the Trojan family. You are going to enjoy meeting this incredible family. Today is not only about Lincoln Riley, the person and the coach, but also about the hiring of what Lincoln Riley represents. It demonstrates that we're committed to winning championships. It says that USC is the premier destination for the best and brightest. It sends a loud and powerful message to the college football world that this sleeping giant is wide awake, standing up and fighting on. And it shows that even in perhaps our lesser moments and our tougher times, there is no limit to what the Trojan family can accomplish when we are united. I'd like to acknowledge a few individuals and groups who helped us in this process. First and foremost, President Folt, your trust in me and your partnership throughout this process gave me so much confidence. <laughs> Carol, you were there each and every day and stepped up in critical moments to ensure we were able to achieve this outcome. And I'm deeply appreciative of that. And so should all Trojan fans who are excited about our new coach. This would not have been possible without you, Carol. <laughs> Chairman Caruso, your unwavering drive to ensure that we achieve what we set out to do represents the fight on mentality at the highest level. Your leadership and guidance plays an integral role in our elite aspirations on the fields of competition. On behalf of our student athletes, donors and fans, thank you for your incredible dedication. This would not have been possible without you, Rick. <laughs> to our Board of Trustees and University leadership, many of which are here today, we've called upon so many of you to assist us and you always answer the bell. Thank you for your passionate support. To Brandon Sosna, my chief of staff, who was the architect of a brilliant search process and was masterful in executing our strategy. He never lost sight or belief in securing the nation's top coach. His network and relationships ensured we had the most accurate and trusted intelligence from day one. And he poured his heart and soul into this search. Brandon, you are a unique talent. We wouldn't be here without you, and I'm so grateful that you were my trusted colleague on this junior journey. Thank you, Brandon Sosper. <laughs> Sam Adams, my deputy chief of staff who pulled consecutive all-nighters behind the scenes to support Brandon and me to help make all this happen. We are blessed to have Sam on our team and in our office. And finally, to Dante Williams for fearlessly stepping into a challenging role during a difficult time to lead our young men this season. Dante is a special talent, and we're grateful for his leadership. Please help me salute Coach Williams. <laughs> there are many others who supported us and leaned into this process, and we're most appreciative of their contributions, even though I wasn't able to mention everyone. I would like to now share a little background on our search process. In September, I said we would conduct a national search in which we would actively, yet patiently, pursue a coach who would deliver on the championship aspirations and expectations we all share. Since then, we engaged a national network to gather intelligence on our candidate list. 
We enlisted the support of multiple consultants to assist us with very specific components. One, we're grateful to Chad Chetlos from Turnkey ZRG for his work in reaching out to our former players and coaches to gather their input and feedback on our search process. Many thanks to Todd and Drew Turner and Craig Littlepage and the entire Collegiate Sports Associates team for their expert support on background checks, confidential character references, social media audits, and other critical information. I also want to thank Stephen Prather and Sport Sorts and Analytics for helping us compile over 400 pages of insightful data analysis. I know Coach enjoys working in that, that space as well. With two months to conduct this search, Brandon and I traveled around the country meeting with many of the key influencers in the college football coaching world to whom we presented a 50-slide presentation on our city, university, community, brand, history, and tradition, and the support and commitment we have for our football program. A special shout out to our partners at J1S for that masterpiece. All these components and many more serve their purpose in increasing the likelihood that we could achieve a successful outcome. The fact we landed our top candidate and one of the best coaches in all of football was not an accident, but instead the product of a thoughtful, thorough, strategic, and comprehensive search process that involved an incredible team. Thank you for everyone that helped in that endeavor. For two, two years, we've asked you to have trust and patience and belief in our vision and our process. And today, that vision and that process brings us to Lincoln Riley. I'm most excited for our current players. If you could have been in the room this afternoon when Coach was in front of them, it was powerful. Our vision is to be the most student athlete centered program in the country and delivering to our athletes the best coaching is a vital part of that. I'm also thrilled for our former players, our alumni, our donors, our fans, our students, our university, and the entire Trojan family. We felt immense pressure to deliver a coach that could unite us all in our pursuit of national championships. And now it's on us to rally together and ensure that we do that and support this coach like he's never been supported with the fight on spirit of USC. We got our guy, and our team is now. And so before Dr. Folt has the honor of introducing Coach Riley, I would like to bring up Rick Caruso, Chairman of the USC Board of Trustees, to the podium to share some marks, remarks. Welcome, Rick. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Well, man. That was fantastic, Mike. Nobody wants to follow you. I want to welcome everybody here, but I want to have a special welcome, Coach, to you and your family, Caitlin, your children. Um, you are joining an exceptional family in the Trojan family, and we are so thrilled to have you with us. I want you to look behind. You're seeing a beautiful city, Los Angeles, but you're also looking at an empty stadium, and I'll bet you this is the last time you're going to see an empty stadium. <laughs> and it's going to be fantastic. There's a couple words I want to say uh, about leadership, and I talked about it a little bit um, yesterday. This is all about leadership. It started out with the Board of Trustees deciding that we're going to find the best, the brightest, the most committed president of a university in the country. That's where it started. We started with 100 people that we interviewed. We got down to one, Carol Fult. There was a unanimous decision that Carol Fult not only understood academics, she understood the importance of a medical enterprise, a research enterprise, but it was important to us that she also understood a sports program and what it meant to be excellent in every corner of this university. And Carol, thank God, accepted our offer to join the team. It was that one move that allowed today to happen. It's all about leadership. She then collected the best minds to run this university and change the trajectory where we are today. And then she turned to sports. And then she said to me, I'm going to find the finest AD in the country and bring him aboard to USC. And lo and behold, I met Mike in my backyard 
on an early evening as the sun was setting. We shared a couple hours together after we were done. I called Carol. I said, you got it. Get this man to join. And that was another big change. It changed what we were going to do in sports, the character, the integrity, the excellence, making sure that not only football was great, but every sport USC plays is great. And then what did Mike's leadership do? It turned to Brandon, who Mike talked about, brought in one of the smartest young guys I have ever met in my life. And I hate to tell you this, Coach, right before we got on a Zoom at 7 AM, I offered Brandon to join a real estate company and get out of the sports team, <laughs> the sports business. He was exceptional in strategizing, negotiating this deal, and putting together the numbers. And here we are today. And I don't believe, Mike, for one minute that he didn't intend to rock the sports world with his choice. Yes, he did, because that man thinks big. And I got to tell you, Coach, his eyes were on you. And whether you knew it or not, he wanted the best and the brightest, and we got it with you. And we're so grateful you believed in us. So all in all, it started out with great leadership from you, Carol, that brought us to this moment. And great leadership, by the way, of my fellow trustees that had the courage and the strength to say, it's time to bring somebody in to change this great university in a way that we could all be so proud of. So here we are, this elite group, this elite coach, and thank you so much. And thank you for believing in us. And again, welcome to the Trojan family. And now I want to introduce our leader and our president, Dr. Carol Fult. Wow. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, everyone, for those wonderful remarks, Mike, Rick, everybody here. Um, your support your commitment to excellence, your faith in the leadership team really gives us wind in our sails. And I'm starting to feel that right now as I, as I stand up here. This is a very special day. I've had a wonderful time talking to so many people and watching the reaction on social media. I love it when they all say they were surprised and ecstatic. Uh, that's a good day. That's a lot of good days when that, that starts happening. And we're seeing all the Trojans come together. They're saying very, um, very carefully thought out things like, wow, just wow, uh, somebody wrote. Uh, somebody else said, legendary hire. And one of my favorites is from our own Matt Leinert, who said, it's a great day to be a Trojan, followed by a thousand exclamation points. <laughs> Seeing that kind of excitement is, of course, makes us all very happy from our current players, our former players, our band members, our students. I saw two students in the airport today who came running up to me to talk about school and the new coach. <laughs> and it's just been, it's a fantastic jolt uh, for all of us. It's just really great. You know, and of course, last week was Thanksgiving. And that was a time when we all can reflect and feel grateful. And I, too, want to take a moment to say thank you to so many people who brought us here today. And I'm going to start with athletic director and my dear friend, Mike Bone. Uh, we did hit it off from the start, and I think I felt that because Mike talked about the student athlete and wanting to see them to succeed and wanted to see them win. And I knew that we had the right person once I got to know that. Um, and this was really, while this is a milestone in our program and the transformation of the athletic program that began with Mike, it was something that he was dreaming of all along. When I was interviewing him, we, con we had conversations at that time about what would be needed in a coach uh, to build the future of Trojan football. And in a way, it was kind of that proverbial unicorn in the forest. And I can tell you, we actually found that unicorn. Your kids are going to remember this. We called you a unicorn. <laughs> but he's someone that is unlike any other, and we are so thrilled to have him here. And bringing him here, as you heard, was a result of a lot of hard work and dedication from Mike and the wonderful team in our athletic department. That team has also evolved over the last two years in football and beyond, um, including a real strong, renewed student focus, diversity in the leadership team and coaches and staff. We're building new facilities, investing to bolster our women's and Olympic sports, and so much more. So it's a great place. If you love sports, you couldn't be at a better university. And by uh, this past spring, the athletics department, I just have to throw this in because I'm the president, received its highest ever cumulative GPA 
with our student athletes, 50 of them getting a 4.0. So they really do keep it going in all aspects of life. So I really want to thank you, Mike, for your leadership and partnership in all these areas. I too want to mention Coach Williams, Dante Williams, as the interim coach. You know, he did step up at a really tough moment and he just put his heart and soul into it. He has been wonderful to work with. He's a tremendous leader for the team. And I thank also the entire football coaching staff and our student athletes for their commitment through this challenging transition year. And I love hearing how excited they are looking forward. And finally, I too want to thank all of our fans, the greatest fans in the country, no doubt. <laughs> and it's not always to be a fan. Easy to be a fan, but our former athletes and our donors, our alumni, have never stopped believing in the dream. And of course, that too gives us wind in our sails. And we want to thank you for keeping that Trojan spirit alive. So now I have the pleasure of introducing that very special, our very, very special new head football coach, Lincoln Riley. I'll say a few more things about you. I get to embarrass him a little bit before he gets to speak. He is the perfect choice for USC. On paper, I know you've all read his amazing uh, resume. He won 85% of his games in his five seasons at the University of Oklahoma. He led the Sooners to four Big 12 titles and four New Year's Six Bowls and three college football playoff appearances. And by the way, that's just in five years. And He's really just getting started. What he's going to do with our players is going to be amazing. And he's determined to return our program to legendary status, and we certainly can't wait. But honestly, what made Coach Riley stand out among all the candidates for me was the parts above him that are not really on the paper. It's who he is as a person and the inspired leadership that he brings to the team. He's going to recruit like a Trojan. He's going to fight hard for the most talented players. He'll develop our student athletes on and off the field. He'll foster a culture that promotes character and integrity. And he's going to be tough. He's going to expect them to learn in practice, in the classroom, and as members of the Trojan community. And he's going to make sure that all the successes that will happen take place in a culture that champions honor and show professional behavior. So everyone knows at USC, when you become a Trojan, your entire family becomes a Trojan. So I, too, want to welcome Caitlin and Sloan and Stella to the Trojan family. You're going to love Los Angeles. We can't wait to get to know you and see you settled. So with that, I better turn it over to the star of the day, USC's new football coach, Lincoln Riley. Fight on. Wow, is this real? Uh, <laughs> unbelievable. Um, I want to thank everybody for being here today on uh, on such short notice. It's uh, yeah, this is a, a surreal moment to be honest. Um, I'm so honored to be the the next head football coach here at USC. It, it means uh, it means a great deal to me. Uh, a few people that I want to thank, and and I could honestly talk about all these people individually and. We got to know each other um, probably as well as you can over the last uh, 36 hours, whatever it's been. It's, it's been a whirlwind, but President Fult, Chairman Caruso, uh, the Board of Trustees, Mike Bone, and then Mike referenced Brandon Sosna. Um, again, I could talk for a long time about these people individually and the impact that they've made on me in such a short time, the obvious impact that they've had uh, on our great university here, but it's honestly more fitting to talk about them as a whole because when they first came to me with interest on this position, that was the first thing that I noticed is they were, they were completely in sync, uh, completely in sync about what they felt like that USC football could be, uh, what they felt like that we needed to do to, to make up the gap. And they were totally united on doing anything and everything possible uh, to help get us to that point. And that was, 
as a football coach, to, to have that support behind you from some of the most influential people in this university, um, from your bosses, um, from people that are going to make big decisions, it said, it said everything that I needed to hear. And uh, so thank you all for this opportunity. It, it means the world to me. Thank you. Um, yeah, to our, to our former players, uh, got to meet a couple of them here. Honored to have Matt, I saw Mark, a couple others here today. It means one, a great deal that you guys are here. Uh, uh, the history of this program is as good as it gets in college football, period. And, and it's that because of the great players, the great coaches, the great administrators, so many people in the past. And, and want you to know that our doors will always be open. Uh, you are a part of us forever. Uh, we are. We can't do this without you guys. And uh, we're going to certainly enlist you to help us build, to help us recruit. And, and, and in return, we hope we can give you a program that you're damn proud of. So thank you, guys. Um, uh, to, to the faculty and, and to the staff uh, here at USC, um, my mentor in this business, Donnie Duncan, taught me a lot about college football and honestly taught me a lot before I really uh, had come close to even understanding it all. But one of the things he taught me that's maybe been the most valuable uh, in being a head coach is you've got to understand that, that football is important, and I know it's very important to our Trojan family. It's very important to this university, uh, but we're just a single part of this university. There's one of the best things about a university community is it's so many different groups coming together uh, and making that environment that's so special and shapes so many people's lives. And so uh, to our faculty, our staff, everybody involved with USC, I want you to know that I'm going to do my best to make sure that we represent you well. Uh, I cannot wait to, to go to work with you. Uh, we're going to put out a football team that hopefully you're proud of on the field, but you're proud of what they do in the classroom. They're, you're proud of what they do in the community and that we represent you well. Uh, and then we work incredibly well together. So cannot wait to, to meet all of you and be a part of your family. Uh, to both our, our current uh, players who had the honor of meeting with uh, about an hour ago, uh, and, to our future, and to our future players, uh, we came here because we believe in what this place can be. And that is because that will be done with the players on the field. And to, to win championships, to get this program to where we all know and believe that it should be, it's going to take every single one of us. And we are going to be committed to, one, bringing the best staff in the country uh, here to USC to help guide this team. I've been able to bring uh, a couple of guys here this morning that are incredibly valuable to me. Uh, Clark Stroud, who will be our director of football operations. Alex Grinch, who will be our defensive coordinator. Uh, Dennis Simmons, who will be our wide receivers coach. Uh, and Benny Wiley, who will be our head strength coach. Uh, these guys got on the plane with me this morning with, without a contract, without anything. I called them and said, you want to come? And they said, yep. And I said, all right. <laughs> plane leaves at 6 a.m. They were there at 540. And uh, they, they have been instrumental uh, in, our, in our success uh, at Oklahoma. And, and I think it says a lot that they, that they wanted to be here uh, with you, with all of us. And, and I can't imagine doing it with any other guys. Uh, cannot wait to, to get the rest of this staff here. And I can promise you it'll be one that you're very proud of. And the combination of that staff and, and a roster that we're going to fight like crazy to build uh, I, can be very, very special. And we plan on building the best roster in the country and, and, and within that locker room, the best culture in the country. It's not about the individual players here. It's not going to be. We're not going to let it be. Uh, I told the team earlier, it's amazing in this era of NIL, of all social media, all the different things going on for individuals that when you care about the team the most, it's funny how all the individual things tend to work out for you. And that's how it's going to be here. The culture will be team first. And we will have a room of great athletes. Yes, they will. But they're going to be people that care about winning championships, winning rings, holding up trophies, raising banners. And that's, that's what we're going to have in that locker room. And that combination of that and a great staff is how you do it. And so cannot wait to get started on that. Uh, I'd be. Uh, I, I think it would not be fitting for me to recognize uh, the University of Oklahoma, uh, the impact that it had on me, the people there. Uh, this was obviously, I told the team earlier, uh, toughest decision of my life uh, to come here. And, and it's, uh, those people there were tremendous to me. And uh, so, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for my time here. That's a, one of the best college football programs in the country and, and has been forever and will continue to be. So very thankful for my time here. Um, to all the Trojan family, uh, we're in this together. 
Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take every single one of us to do what we have to do. We all have different roles in that, and I think it's important for us at this time to, to all pull together. And uh, I can promise you that you're going to get the best out of myself. You're going to get the best out of uh, our staff, out of our players, uh, and we're going to put something on that field that you're proud of. And I, and I agree uh, with Chairman Caruso. This place is going to be full. This is going to be the, the mecca of, of college football. And, then, and I don't, I'm not, I'm, not big on, I'm not big on false promises, hollow promises. I'm not going to stand up here and talk about all the different things that I think we can do. I, I, the, we see the potential there. We know we've got to go to work. And it's going to take every single one of us. But if we all do what we can, can you imagine the scene down here? Some of you guys have seen it. Some of you guys have experienced it. I'm ready to experience it. Uh, and I'm ready for our current players and our future players to experience that as well. So, um, and lastly, uh, certainly want to thank my family. It's a dream to be able to do this with you guys. So, love you guys. All right, now it's time to go to work. <laughs> now it's time to go to work. Uh, so thrilled again to be here. Um, honored to be your coach, honored to be a part of you. Fight on, thank you. Hey, Lincoln, Ryan Karchi at the LA Times. Uh, just wondering, obviously this came, seemingly came together pretty quickly. Uh, you lost a, your last game at Oklahoma on Saturday. Can you just take us from that point to Sunday morning when, when this kind of deal came together and what was kind of going through your head as, as you made that decision? Yeah, no, it was, a, to be honest, a little bit of a blur. Um, we got home uh, late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. Um, and got the information from, from USC that there was some, some real interest. And uh, so talked a, a little bit about it um, early that morning, slept for a couple hours, and then uh, had a chance to uh, jump on a Zoom with, with some of our university leadership and, and uh, kind of talk through what this might be. And uh, it, it, it came together quickly. But to be honest, in this day and age in college football, it, it, it kind of has to if it's going to. It's just the way of the world right now. And, uh, but I would say the impact of, of meeting with our university leadership uh, was was pretty immediate for me. Uh, I'm aware, obviously, aware of this program, aware of um, what it's what it's done, uh, what it can be. I think that's pretty well known in the college football world, and that was part of it. But you know, you can't just rely on the logo. You know, you can't just just because it's USC. That's 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 a great start. But that's all it is is a start. You better have the right people behind it. You better have commitment at all levels. You better have alignment at all levels or, or you're not going to be successful. And uh, when I met with our university leadership, uh, I could see there was total alignment. And, and more than just alignment, there was excitement. I mean, you could tell they were ready to go. And uh, th their energy um, just spoke to me. And, uh, it, and so yeah, it came together pretty quickly, had some conversations, some, some tough conversations back and forth in, in making a decision. but. It was, it was tough to leave the place I left, it was, but at the same time, um, 
I knew this was the right thing, and uh, um, just knew knew this is where me and my family wanted to be. And I know Mike has talked a lot about just building a championship program and building up the infrastructure around it. When you just sort of took a cursory look at that, you know, what was your kind of impression of where the program stood, and how much did that just kind of influence your decision to, to move here? Well, I, I think I looked more at the more at potential. Um, it, it's things are going to change. Uh, a lot of things are going to change. The roster is going to change. Uh, facilities are going to change. There's going to it's going to continue to evolve. Um, but I saw again, I saw the right leadership behind it. Um, I saw a history and tradition of excellence. Uh, I saw a place that is is fully committed to being where we feel like we can be here. And uh, and I felt the exact same way about it. So. Um, you know, it's it's time to go to work now. You know, it's time to build this roster. It's time to do the things that we need to do facility-wise. It's time to de to do to bring in the great staff. I mean, this is this is the fun part. You know, this is where you build it, and uh, we're going to get the right people on board, players, staff, everybody, and we're going to work like crazy to get it done. Hey, Lincoln, Antonio Morales from the Athletic. Obviously, you built a successful program at Oklahoma, what about this challenge of, of getting this program back on track intrigued you? Everything intrigued me. It, it did. I, I think the, the location, um, I think the, the history of the program, I think the opportunities here uh, to recruit um, and build a national championship level roster, uh, the opportunity for my family to live in a new place to experience new things. I think you know, I've, I've got two young girls, as I mentioned, and for them to be able to experience different things in this life is very, very important for me and, uh, and my wife. And so we're, we've always kind of been people, we're, we're not scared to take a risk. You know, we're not scared to, I don't see this as a risk, but we're not scared to, to, to take a jump. And, uh, and this is, this, this was the right time. And uh, everything about it made sense. And to me, everything about it is, is, I love the situation we're in right now. I do. I, I love it. And uh, I think we're going to do nothing but, but grow and build. And again, we've got the support and the right people here to get it done. Yeah, Bill Plaschke, LA Times. How soon can this program get back to prominence? How much time do you need? <laughs> well, I've been in LA for a few hours here. Um, <laughs> um, I, in this day and age, I think it can happen quickly. I do. I, I think. There's a lot of good things going on in this program right now that we can absolutely build on. Uh, that I think in this day and age, with the way college football works, you can turn over rosters in so many different ways, and we'll be very, uh, um, very deliberate and, and creative and intentional about that. Uh, and with again the, uh, the combination of the staff we're going to bring in, the players we're going to bring in, the leadership that we have, the support we have, uh, again getting our former players so involved with this program, which is incredibly important to me. I just look at it like, how, how can we not do it? You know, how's it not going to work? And so, uh, you know, there's no, no time is soon enough. I mean, no time is soon enough, but we're going to fight like crazy and, and take advantage of every moment. Uh, Ryan Abraham, USCfootball.com. Uh, with the early signing period coming up so quickly, did that have any influence on the timing of your decision to come to USC? And then what's the plan for recruiting over these next couple of weeks? We're going to do a lot of it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I don't know that it had an impact on the timing. I mean, I, you know, we had the conversation with USC and knew it was something we wanted to do. And I think out of, you know, obviously respect for, for Oklahoma and allowing them to be able to, to, to move on and, and obviously to, to get here and get an opportunity not only to not only to, to recruit, but to get a chance to see our future team, you know, want to see them practice this week, see them play this weekend. Uh, what, a, what a great advantage for us to be able to get to know the roster a little bit. So, um, no, I'm thankful that we've got two weeks here to get it done. I think we'll get a lot done in two weeks. Um, and, and there'll be important decisions because the decisions we make here in the next few weeks will, will, will shape the future of this roster. And uh, so we're, uh, we are definitely going to hit the ground running. Smart Orange County Register. Uh, Mike, uh, the coaching search cycles go so quickly these days. How did you balance trying to make sure you got your top candidate without letting other potential candidates slip away? 
Well, I think that's a great question because it, it's difficult. It's extremely difficult. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think that being surrounded by people that really instilled a sense of, of confidence that we could deliver on that. I mentioned Carol, Rick, Brandon Sosna, uh, so many others around us, boosters, supporters, media, talking about, hey, this is Los Angeles. This is the sports capital of the world. And uh, we can do it. And when we hear from leaders from uh, the Lakers, the Dodgers, Rams, Chargers, people that represent the heart of this city, that inspires you. And so um, I think there was, uh, I mentioned it earlier, there was always somebody that stepped in at the right time. And our confidence just remained very, very high. And I think that was important to ensure that, that Lincoln or, or any other coach that maybe thought this is something they would do would, would see that and, and, and in our eyes. And I thought it was really, really important. So it was about the team that constantly found a way to ensure that we never wavered. And uh, I think that that's important. And uh, Lincoln and I were both, uh, as I like to call, all the clipboard quarterbacks and uh, played. And so we know that that sense of being able to have that look and, and, and being that, that person, that confidence. And uh, Lincoln's a, a phenomenal uh, developer of Heisman Trophy quarterbacks. And uh, we've had our share of them here, too. And so I think it's that sense of, of confidence in the eyes and, and, and thinking that we can do it, whether it's fourth and nine and Matt's got to throw it and get the first down and win a, a game or any of those pieces. And I think that's why uh, it's important to have a leader like Lincoln Riley that knows what that look and feel is like and being able to develop it. And so it was really a contagious feeling. How you doing? Christian John Bradley, Annenberg Media. You talked about, you know, you wanted to build a culture of teamwork. So can you talk about the type of identity you're looking to build on the, on the, on the field? Well, I think, yeah, everything's going to start with the team here. I mean, this is, again, no matter what all's going on in this world, as this world evolves and changes, especially for, for you know, young men that are 18 to 22 years old, uh, this is still a team game. This always will be a team game, and it's going to be won by the best teams, not the best individual players or the most talented individual players. And I think there, there are some, I think, new challenges this day and age in creating those atmospheres. But I think all that's done is it means, you know, coaches and leaders and players have to adapt to that. And I think the, the best teams, the teams that have the, the best chemistry, the best culture, maybe have more of an advantage this day and age than ever before because of all the distractions and all that can take you away from it being team first. So uh, it's certainly going to start that way. Uh, obviously, to build a championship caliber team, you have to be a lead on all three sides of the ball this day and age, no question about it. And uh, the combination of building a great roster and bringing in a tremendous staff, uh, I think will allow us to do that. Um, also going to bring in a staff that, that is able to adapt to our talent. Um, of course, we will have parameters that we set, uh, skill sets that we target. But at the same time, you better have coaches that are good enough to be flexible and, and to learn and to be able to bend and adjust. And uh, so we will certainly have that. And I think that'll be evident on the field. Lincoln Scott Schrader from We Are SC. Uh, you, you're leaving a program to where you, you, you've won conference championships, done better than that, two losses this year. You're taking over a program that's you're probably at the, at the lowest point it's been in quite a while. How do you sell this, this university and, and football program? That's not a bad start. Um, <laughs> and I, I just, I think, I think the way I was sold on it, honestly, I mean, I, I've, I'm the head coach here now, but a few days ago I wasn't. And I'm looking at it a lot like a recruit is. And, and I think when you see the commitment that, is, that is, exists in this university right now from the leadership on down, when you see the setting, when you see the history, when you see the desire that the people have here and now us to, to take this place to where we all feel like it should be, I, I think we will have I think we will have a lot of opportunities to bring the very best here to USC. And uh, I think that's, that's already started. And, and, uh, and we're just doing the press conference, and it's already started. So we're going to, it's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. Uh, Ryan Young, Trojansports.com. Lincoln, this job's been open for two and a half months. When it first came open, did it cross your mind at all? 
Do you have any thoughts these last few months? And then for Mike as well, when this process started, where was Lincoln on your radar initially? Yeah, I would say when it, I mean when it came open. I mean, of course, everybody that follows college football is aware of this and is aware of the the, the potential and, and the history of this place. Uh, I don't know that it crossed my mind initially ever as a as a potential destination for me. I can't honestly say that when it came open. Um, I was at a place where I was very happy and a, and a place um, that I left still very happy. Uh, but again, as that opportunity presented itself and I learned more about it, it just became more obvious to me, my family, uh, to several key members of our staff that, that this was the right move. Well, similar to what is going on on campus associated with any leadership position, uh, President Folt challenged me, said, get the best, get the best. So that was Lincoln Riley, no question. So he was number one when obviously that was our goal, no question. You probably wouldn't tell them if I was two or three, would you? <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Are we going to have some fun with a guy like Lincoln Riley or what? You have no idea how great he is. You really don't. He is a lot of fun and the people around him already and obviously Caitlin and those two uh, beautiful girls. But uh, it is really going to be a lot of fun to partner with a head coach like this. Uh, Dennis Freeman, News for Us Online. Uh, Lincoln, how important is it to you to recruit and to retain the talent in your own backyard? Oh, I think it's critical, uh, and that'll be honestly something that'll be a little bit new for me. Um, was, obviously, there were some tremendous players where I came from, but it wasn't a, a huge area, and, and just what would maybe be known as a as a incredibly fertile talent base. And, and this is this is obviously a totally different experience. But you know, we've had uh, we've we've had some success uh, recruiting players from this area in the past. Uh, we've had a chance through the years to build some great relationships with people out here that we really trust um, and know. And uh, But I think it'll be incredibly important. Um, we'll, we'll certainly not just limit ourselves to that uh, because we want to go get the best wherever they're at. But I think there's also a realization that a lot of the best are right here. And uh, what a tremendous advantage uh, for us, for this program, and it'll certainly be very important to every member of our staff to, to make sure that, again, I go back to there's the great athletes. That's the easy part to see. Um, we're going to go get the great athletes that are the right people for this program and the right people for that locker room and the right people for the culture, and I hope there's as many here as possible, and of those, we're going to try like crazy to go get every one of them. Hey, Lincoln, uh, Paul, you got a ESPN. I'm curious, you're, you're bringing obviously some of your staff over, but I'm interested to hear, you know, what do you think of the things you did at Oklahoma that can translate to here, and what are some of the things you think you'll have to do differently at a program like USC? That's a good question. Probably one that could spend a lot of time answering. Uh, you know, I, I was very fortunate at Oklahoma. I, I walked into a phenomenal situation. Uh, Bob Stoops was a, a phenomenal uh, head coach for me the first two years there and somebody I learned a, a lot from and, and still will rely on a lot as I go forward in this job. Um, the things I learned there, um, you know, Oklahoma has phenomenal alignment uh, from the president, the AD, the, uh, on down. It's, 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 it's set up for success and there's a reason why that program has been so successful for, year, for years on end and it's going to continue to be successful. Um, uh, so I think the alignment was key. Um, I think uh, the investment of not just the players and the staff, but everybody around to do their part, everybody around to be all in and, and invested in doing everything they can to help make the program better. I felt that at my time there, and, and we want to do everything we can to, to create that here. And certainly, I mean, on a day like today, how can you not feel that? Uh, and then I also recognize this is a different job. This is a different challenge. It's a different setting. and so. Um, I think we have a lot of core values that we'll stick to, uh, but we also have to be adapt. We have, we're going to have to adapt and be flexible to, to cater to, to this job and to, to our people, our fans, uh, our players. And so uh, that'll be our job to find that balance.
What we have to say is what yes. they're dying to what
Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Lincoln Riley Press Conference Post Game Show. I don't think we've ever done one of these before, so we probably got to come up with a name. But uh, appreciate you all joining us. We have an incredible crowd inside the Coliseum. We're inside the Scholarship Tower, just above us on the roof, the 1923 Club. You all just watched the press conference with Lincoln Riley and the USC administration, and we're here to usher in a new era of USC football. I am Jordan Moore, alongside the All-American Sean Cody. Yeah. Sean would like a go, little Sean. louder cheer, if we're being honest. His ego needs a little bit louder than that. How about Sue Cravens? Yeah. I beat you. I definitely beat you. And that. then our quarterback, Max Brown. Boom. Well, we'd like to thank all of you. We'd like to thank everyone here. We appreciate people watching at home. We know that not everyone could make it here on a Monday, but we have an you know, incredible support, incredible fans, incredible Trojan Athletic Fund. We'd like to thank all our sponsors. We have some here in attendance too, USC Credit Union, Ontario Airport, National Funding, Smart Stop, Yeti, and Monster Hydro. So thank you to everybody. The Spirit of Troy, the Trojan Marching Band has just entered the building. And as we go on, we will have guests. We will have Lincoln Riley here to close the show. So the head coach will be here and uh, this is all about him today but we'll also have Mike Bone and we'll have Carol Fold, Rick Caruso, we'll have others hopefully too uh, as we, uh, we we hang with you here. Guys uh, let's get it started. Uh, what, what were your reactions? I mean it's been a whirlwind uh, couple days here. Uh, what, what were your first reactions Sean when you heard the news? Well it was amazing Jordan. You know uh, you, you see it all over social media. I thought I was in the inside of inside of USC <laughs> insiders and I, apparently I was not. I found out on <laughs> social media as well. Uh, probably like most of you here and uh, just an exciting time. A, a joyous time. Everyone's you know just just to see everyone here. The excitement about it. The, the energy that, it, that it's brought to the stadium and all the great words I think Lincoln Riley had to say. Uh, what a, a fantastic job he did with the interview there. And I, I, I think it just brings in a tremendous amount of energy to us. So I, I, I'm, I'm excited. I know everyone here is excited. And I, I'm sure they just got to keep that ball, ball rolling. Yeah, you said it. The energy is different. I've been going to classes this last semester. And, you know, obviously it's exciting to be a student at SC. But today, this morning when I woke up, I saw a lot more bodies traveling down McClintock at 7 a.m. And <laughs> it seemed like everybody was excited to go to class today. And workouts were great. And didn't matter if you were conditioned. Coach Riley's here, and I think that's kind of the, the sentiment and why everybody is so excited today. I'm excited. I found out just like you did. We kind of pulled a rabbit out of a hat with this one and pulled probably the best coach in college football right now. So that's, that's very exciting. I was up till 2.30 in the morning Sunday doing the, uh, the post-game show. Appreciate uh, anyone, yeah, anyone, anyone listening that. there. <laughs> hey, that's our and I guys. wake up 12 hours later or whatever it was, 10 hours later, and we have a new head coach. And so the, 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 the whole changing of the tide from uh, feeling a little down in the dumps, if we're being honest, to then flipping the script, having one of not only the best head coaches, but from my angle, a quarterback guy, one of the best offensive minds in all of football. It's going to be fun offense to watch and uh, as creative of an offensive mind as they come. So – as excited as, uh, as I could be. Yeah, you know, guys, and one of my reactions, too, is externally, I don't know if the people in this room right here, but externally there was a question about how much USC still cared about football. What was the commitment from the university? I feel like, you know, how good is this job, right? That was a question that we heard a lot over the last few weeks. I think all those got answered to, uh, today. Well, definitely, and I, I think uh, – Brandon Sosna and, and Mike Bone get a, a tremendous amount of credit for what, what just happened, right? You know, they've been taking a lot of flack, maybe from some in the room, maybe from some <laughs> around here, but they did a great job. They kept it under wraps for such a long time. They kept it, you know, in the right direction, and they got the guy they wanted. So I, I just think all the credit in the world goes to them. Uh, they, they, they found the guy they wanted, they pinpointed him, and they went after him, and they gave him, you know, and now, now you got this, this kind of environment and this kind of setting. I mean, beautiful day today with a backdrop yeah. there with Mike Bone introducing Lincoln Ryan. Riley, think about this Coliseum. I mean, what a couple days ago, and yeah. and the energy that was in here—it was making Life an all-time fast, my, an all-time low. So, and to have to go from that to this, uh, it's just a great, a great time. It just goes to show that USC is USC, no matter what position or situation the team happens to be in. And if we're high of highs, lows of lows, there's just a respect that you have to have for this university, and we're able to pull moves and pull big-time names out of thin air whenever we can, just off the connections we have, the alumni connection we have, the, the faculty we have working, it seems like everything's pointing in the right direction now. And it don't, doesn't only change within this room and in this university, but it changed the entire landscape of college football. You could feel it across Twitter, across the various Twitter threads with other fan bases. There's some momentum out west, and that's been the first time in quite some time. So the ability to prove that SC is still a blue blood job, the ability to win a national championship here, uh, 
job well done, Mike Moan and Carol Folt. Yeah, so let's talk about Lincoln Riley a little bit, the new head coach here uh, before he even settles in. I mean, he has such an impressive resume. As I thought Carol Folt actually said it well. She listed out his resume and, and everything he's done. He's done it in five years. I mean, he was a great offensive coordinator before uh, he was a head coach, but but in five years, uh, you know, he's running off four Big 12 titles. He's got two Heisman winners. Uh, I mean, th this is somebody who's accomplished a lot uh, at an age uh, all right, Sean. Yeah, 38. Yeah, 38. Yeah, look at me. I'm, I'm only up here just talking in front of you guys. He's, he's coaching uh, players uh, down there on the field. So, yeah, I mean, Carol did a great job. Carol Fold did a great job of listing of what he's done. I mean, his accomplishments with Heisman's and, and getting to the college football playoff where, you know, these are things that USC is trying to aspire to, trying to move towards. And then he's done some great things. I mean, an offensive savant, a guy who just, you know, can, can figure out a ways to beat you as a defensive guy. You know, you, you, I, I try to watch his film and just thinking how many different angles, how he uses players, how how he moves the ball around, it just keeps you guessing at all times. So I think that's something to be really excited. And then you think about Alex Grinch, his defensive coordinator, he's bringing in and, and the stuff he's been able to do, even at his time at Washington State, how he uses players, how he moves them around, how he uses his personnel the right way. So I think on both sides of the ball, you feel pretty good if you're a Trojan fan with, with both those guys. We They made a list, Trojan fans, faithful alumni, we made a list of what they thought a, a USC coach needed in order to fulfill this position and for everybody to be satisfied. We needed one, somebody that was proven with their record, with their wins, check. We needed somebody who needed postseason experience, check. We needed somebody that can bring the excitement back to the field and put up big points while keeping teams in check and also uh, uh, establishing that dominance, check. So we hit a home run with this hire. I, I don't see anything wrong. I met Sue about a decade ago on the recruiting trail. Ever since then, I've been part of the Trojan family. I can't remember a time where everyone is pointing in the same direction. Yeah. All momentum pointing in the same direction. It's refreshing to hear. and. Uh, a lot of good energy, for sure. Yeah, and Max is going to give us a breakdown in a little bit of, of this offense. But it, it is an interesting offense, guys. And I was just looking at it, you know, statistically. You know, it, put, it obviously puts up huge passing numbers. You've seen it with the Heismans and Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray winning the Heismans. Jalen Hurts going on and having a great NFL career already. He runs the ball, though, too, right? I mean, this is, this is a real different uh, variation. You'll get into it. But rushing offense was number one in the Big 12, 2017, 2018, 2019. I know that's uh, music to the ears of some in this room. Yeah, Coach Riley cut his teeth in the air raid uh, landscape, which I know gives some of you guys uh, the Schneider. shivers a little bit. Schneider. But he's done a great job innovating his offense. It is a spread offense, uh, but they run the rock well. And like Jordan said, in the next couple of segments, we'll, uh, we'll dive into the footage a little bit. I think, I think it's great because you see the offensive linemen they produce, too. they got guys that can move around, athletic guys that run and hit people and tackle. So uh, great offensive linemen have come out of there. Running backs have come out of there. Uh, you see Mixon, the running back. I mean, these guys you know, can run the ball. And that's which, when you're a complete offense and you have balance to yourself and you can attack. Like I said, me and Sue were on defenses where you, know, when, when, when you have to watch and break down every single player on that offense and get ready for them to attack you. Yep. That's when it makes it hard to play defense. Yeah, and... <laughs> from a defensive perspective, when you have an offense that can just air you out, you can't go one-on-one -on, -one on the side, so you have to go zone because we have to respect the pass. Now that run game opens up, and I think with his offensive mind and the, and the athletes we have on, on the roster already, including some of the guys that will come over from recruiting or the transfer portal, whatever it may be, it's already going to be a tough task guarding USC outside one-on-one, -on -one, and that's just going to open up the run game for all these talented backs. Yeah, and, you know, he hit the ground running as a head coach and offensive coordinator first, as I mentioned, offensive. I mean, he took college football by storm, changed offense. The one adjustment he's had to make as a head coach is, is figuring out that defensive side of the ball, and, and he's made a lot of improvements under Alex Grinch. When you, when you take a look at it, Sean, you know, second and third in the Big 12 in total defense in 2019 and 2020, you know, they have made improvements on, on, on that side of the ball. Yeah, and draft picks. They put out draft picks there, you know, at the defensive line, at the linebacker position. Alex Grinch has a nice, has, a, has, has, has all the accredited seasons there, and he's, he's figuring out what he wants to do at each single spot. And I know he'll come to USC. He'll see what we have to work with. They're going to, you know, they're going to be recruiting their butts off. I think that's one of the biggest things about this whole thing is just how big it is for recruiting and just how yep. big it is in Southern California. Uh, being a kid from Southern California and having a coach who's going to recruit this area, put a fence around this whole thing and say, hey, all the best players that we want to handpick, we're taking them. Everyone else, okay, you can get your scraps, but when it comes to recruiting Southern California kids, you're coming to USC, and I think that's the biggest thing about Lincoln Riley High. 
my biggest thing about Coach Grinch is how versatile and progressive his defense is because over the last three or four years, you see guys who would probably play safety one play, line up at nickel, line up at corner. You see D linemen with their hand in the dirt one play, line up at rush backer, drop into a flat. So that's exactly what you need in the Pac-12. With a different offense you face, you're going to face the spread in this, in this conference. You're going to face power O or power I uh, uh, run game from Stanford in this offense. You're going to face every trick play in the book when you play against Chip Kelly. And with a guy like that at D.C., we kind of can match up with whatever he throws out of because in the Big 12, they run all of those same formations. So he's familiar with what he's getting into. And Coach Riley alluded to it, the ability for his staff to adjust to the personnel that he has. You notice that on the offensive side of the ball, his offense changes depending on who his quarterback is. Defensively, you mentioned Alex Grinch at Washington State. He was known for the speed defense because that's what he had at Washington State. He had speed and maybe not size. Well, now that you're able to recruit bigger Sean Cody's of the world, how does that offense uh, evolve? And it's a staff that's very familiar with the West Coast. It feels like uh, it's a right marriage there. All right, let's welcome our first special guest on the stage. I see him to my left. We got another USC quarterback. It's the great Mark Sanchez. <laughs> What's going on, Mark? Good to see you. What was, uh, hop go. in the middle, man. You're the, you're the quarterback. Right. What was your first reaction uh, when, when you saw the hire? Whoa. <laughs> uh, this, was, this was big. And, uh, you know, you hear from alumni and, and people around that we've, I have relationships with and everybody, you know, wants to have the inside scoop. And so you get all these different quotes from different people and you hear, hey, we're going to swing for the fences and, and we'll see what happens and maybe we land with our guy and all that. I mean, it sounds like they got him right out of the, right out of the gate. <laughs> this is unbelievable as... Speaking from a quarterback perspective, I mean, where else would you want to go? It's, it's a very similar situation to when I was a kid in school um, at Mission Viejo High School, and you see just a quarterback factory. I mean, that's what this guy's done with Heisman Trophy winners, first-round picks, first overall picks, guys playing in the NFL, playing well in the NFL. I mean, where else would you want to be? And, um, you know, the place sells itself. And, and I thought uh, Mike Bone did an excellent job, and Brandon Sosna, um, the whole crew, man, they, they really nailed it. And like, like he said, this place is a sleeping giant, so it's just been waiting to, uh, to wake up a little bit, and I think, I think today was a nice alarm clock. Mark, you, you're breaking down all the film across the land now. We've seen you in college doing college broadcasting, now doing NFL stuff. Offensively, what, can you, what do we expect from Lincoln Riley? What do you expect to see from him at, at, at USC? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, he gets tagged with that air raid kind of uh, moniker now. Um, but I think there's a little more to that. I think maybe um, it's a little different for me seeing a coach with a play call sheet that's only like the size <laughs> of a post-it note, you know, because I'm used one. to these big old large uh, play call sheets. But um, he's more than the air raid. It's, it's evolved. Yeah. And he can run it. He can throw it. I, I've seen different styles of quarterbacks go through and have success. Yep. And that's always yep. a good sign because just like before – uh, me here at SC, I mean, when uh, Coach Chow and Coach Sarkeesian were developing Carson Palmer as opposed to Matt Castle, as opposed to Matt Liner, to me, we all have a little bit different style. We're all our own unique quarterback. He's done it with different guys, and that is, that is impressive. That's not easy to do. Um, so with that in his resume, and then the recruiting, <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, he was selling kids to go to Norman, Oklahoma. Let's be real yeah. here, okay? Yeah. A, a lot of these kids, unless they're from there, couldn't even point out Norman, Oklahoma on a map. I'm sorry, that's just real life. It's not Los Angeles. So, yeah, like L.A., I mean, look at this place. He gets off a plane, it's 75 degrees and sunny and beautiful. Like, this is, I mean, this is a no-brainer. It's, it's pretty cool. Well, to add to your point, when you said that he's had so many different quarterbacks that he's walked with, like, we don't need the prototypical guy to come in, exactly. and you don't, you don't need to be a set style to be successful in his offense. He's taken quarterbacks who couldn't see over their own line and made them Heisman <laughs> Trophy winners. He oh, yeah. took a guy that was a walk-on and made him a Heisman Trophy winner. So I think this offense is it's brilliant, and anybody that is a gunslinger and, oh, yeah. and puts their faith and trust into Lincoln, they're, they're, he's going to give them the, the, the formula of success. So I agree. It should be a, a quarterback factory again. should be fun. It should yeah. be really fun. He's explosive offense, the vertical passing game that he employs. I mean, it's unbelievable. And then the studs at wide out, tight end, running back, they're all over the league and uh, all over his, his fingerprints are all over the NFL. And that's, that's what you want to see as a young high school player getting ready to take that next step. And lastly, what do you mean to all you guys that uh, he, he really made a point to talk about former players and keeping everyone involved in this program and, and sort of doing it as one? Go ahead, Mark. 
that's I'm, I'm gonna be calling him all the time now. I know he, <laughs> he he gave me the green light to call him, email him, tickets, coach. I need a suite. No, sorry. <laughs> um, that is that does mean a lot. As as a former player who loves this university, you know, I got my dad and my son here um, because it's an important day. We want to help. We want to support in any way we can. And that's the only message I said to him. Hey, man, you need anything? You're down in Orange County. You want to grab a bite to eat? Let me know. <laughs> Whatever you need, other than that, you need me to call a recruit. Whatever I can do, I'm happy to help. And so um, hearing him say that, that he wants us around, um, you know, guys like Matt and Reggie and Carson. we got to get Carson back, man. What's the deal? Carson know, was man, back this cool. year. We, we, we got out, a little Carson love this year. It was good to see him. Did he run him out of the tunnel yet? Yeah, he ran him out of the tunnel. Week four. I had shirts. I had Carson Palmer shirts made. I was all got to get one of those. Thank goodness. Good. That fires me up because he was my idol growing up. Yeah. I know he's like off in Idaho. And doing yeah, he's got the whole Idaho thing going on. Hard to get him off the mountain, but it he'll, he'll come out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Sanchez, Thanks, thank Seth. you so appreciate much for coming up. up. We appreciate having you back. And hope to see much more of guys like Mark yeah. and all the great alums. Appreciate you, man. Maybe invite uh, me down to Orange County one time. Jeez. Yeah, where's your invite, Sean? I haven't got invited to Orange County yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, in a sec, Max is going to give us a little breakdown, but I uh, wanted, wanted to talk a little basketball, just remind you of two things. Hey, you know what? Uh, this is a dads and daughters night coming up at Galen Center for Women's Basketball. It's perfect for Lincoln Riley. He's a dad with two daughters, so oh, maybe dad. we'll get Lincoln Riley there on January 2nd. It's when the Trojans take on Arizona State, the women of Troy. Uh, that dads and daughters package is uh, just $30. It's two tickets, two meal vouchers, a replica jersey, so get your tickets at usctrojans.com slash dads. And then men's basketball. I hope you guys are all watching men's basketball. Undefeated. Trojans are off to a 6 no star Undefeated. just locked up San Diego State. Shout out Moby. Ooh, that's our guy. They got a big game coming up on Wednesday against Utah, but there's a big holiday package, too, for that uh, Long Beach State game. Nice 2 o'clock Sunday game. Uh, so a good one for the family. $30 package includes two tickets and a holiday-themed USC basketball sweater. So visit usctrojans.com slash MBB promos to purchase that one. All right, Max Brown, our, our offensive guru, is going to take you now through a, a little cut-up of uh, what, what we can expect from Lincoln Riley's offense. Yeah, perfect. This is, uh, this is my bread and butter right here. A little, little X's and O's talk, which I know uh, all you uh, football fans will, will be excited about there. Uh, I alluded to it earlier. I know a lot of SC fans, you guys were calling me on the post-game show saying, hey, we got to get back to the old school ways. We got to get back to under, under center, get the fullback out there, run it right at the defense. Well, I'm here to tell you that specific mold is not going to happen, and you should be excited because it's going to be more of a spread mold, and it's still an explosive, innovative offense. And Coach Riley's favorite run play is the counter run game. That's where he goes to. That's where it all starts for him. And as we uh, head up to the footage there, hopefully the, uh, the tech operates with us. There you go, bud. There we go. Counter run play for Coach Riley is his staple. It's going to be the running back going from right to left, and you're going to pull the right guard and the right tackle from right uh, from the right side to the left side. You're going to see a lot of this. You're going to kick out the outside uh, defensive end, climb up to the linebackers with the offensive linemen, and it creates big holes for the running back right there. This is a staple in his offense, getting these big offensive linemen up out of their stance, pulling them around, and getting leverage and numbers in the run game. Be on the, uh, the lookout for that run play. It's a Coach Rowley special. Different wrinkle right here. Instead of the guard and tackle pulling around this time, it'll be the guard and the tight end moving from right to left. Our old head coach, uh, Coach Sark, had a tough time with this uh, run play in the Red River <laughs> rivalry. They went to it a bunch, scored on it a few times in this ball game. Big reason why they, uh, they won this game. And when you establish the run, it's all about establishing the run because that opens up everything behind that. Watch, watch it get once again. Left tackle, left guard, pulling around from left to right. Big play fake in the run game. This linebacker for Iowa State saying, man, we've seen this before. I got to get up. I got to get up and uh, defend against the run. And Coach Riley is saying, that's exactly what we want you to do, linebacker. They suck up with the run. That leaves a lot of green grass behind this linebacker. And then the tight end sits right in that vacated zone with a big catch right there. And that's one reason I'm especially excited with this offense because USC has a lot of young, exciting tight ends. Coach Riley is going to be very innovative using all of those names. I'd expect expect the, the tight end room to be very active this year. And the other way, other wrinkle that you can uh, implement uh, off the run game is more pro style concepts. Just because it's a spread offense, just because he comes from air raid, doesn't mean he can't do 
pro-style concept. Mark, Matt Liner, Carson Palmer made a living off this play. You're going to attack the single high safety with a deep post to the field and a deep over coming from right to left. It's a two-man concept. It all starts with the big run fake to the running back. That gets the linebackers to suck up, and I wouldn't want to be a, uh, a secondary trying to defend that. I remember when I was here, this was Marquise Lee. This was Nelson Aguilar, guys that were uh, big-time receivers, getting a lot of yards on this play. The safety's in a bind. Not sure if he should cover the post up top, but if he goes with the post up top, you got to over under, uh, underneath it and calling big shots down the field. Mark alluded to it, the uh, explosive down the field pass play. And here's what excites me the most about Coach Riley. He has the run game, but anyone can call counter. He has the pass game, but anyone can call that concept. It's the creative wrinkles. It's what he has between the two ears that make him so successful. This is just a basic shovel pass, but he's got a unique wrinkle off of it. He's going to play action first, and we'll see a replay of it once one more time. He's going to play action first. These linebackers are saying, hey, I got to suck up. I got to defend against this run. They see run. Then they're saying, oh, they're play action to me. They're dropping aggressively back into coverage. And Coach Riley is saying, perfect. They're on their heels. Now we'll just shovel pass down to our running back. Linemen are out there uh, trying to get a hat for a hat in the run game. And I can see a little Keontae Ingram, little Darwin Barlow getting a little shovel pass in, uh, in open space and making a play right there. The, uh, our offense linemen are going to need to be athletic, going to need to be able to move, but they're most importantly going to need to be able to be uh, physical as well like we're seeing right there. Another wrinkle, I mentioned that whole counter run scheme of the left guard and the left tackle pulling around. You're going to see it here one more time, but the creative wrinkle this time, he's going to motion a receiver behind him. More window dressing for the defense to navigate, and instead of handing the ball off to the running back, this time the quarterback's uh, going to come to play. Gone are the days of recruiting quarterbacks like me, I think. <laughs> it's going to be more dual threat guys here wearing uh wearing the Cardinal and gold, but I will say Coach Riley's done a great job. We all know the quarterbacks he's had. They've all been different. They've adjusted to each quarterback they've had. Once again, watch the left tackle, left guard. They're pulling around. The big boys get going. This is a concept he loves, but you can do different wrinkles off of it. Running back's the lead blocker there and uh, explosive both in the pass game and the run game. And two last examples in the uh, creative plays department from this past Saturday, their uh, rivalry game against Oklahoma State. Look at the tight end at the top of the screen. He's, he's tucked in there. He's trying to block. This is what I love about Coach Riley. There's plays, about six a game where I turn on the film and you watch and guys are wide open. Why are they wide open? Because Coach Riley is up at Heritage Hall scheming plays for guys to leak out and, uh, and, and make a defense pay. As we're seeing right there, tight end blocks, 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 releases into the the flat. I believe that's actually an H-back too. So if there's any H-backs uh, out there on the recruiting front, Coach Riley likes using those guys. And last little wrinkle right here. It's simple. It's nothing groundbreaking, but uh, it just shows the pressure that Coach puts on defense. They're going to run with a little option to the left and just pitch it back on a little reverse. Once again, the offensive linemen is pu are, are, are pulling. They have to be athletic. I can see a uh, little Taj Washington, a little Gary Bryant on that action right there. So couldn't be more excited for, for Coach Riley. Every reason to be excited on the head coaching front, but he is an, an elite play caller, one of the brightest minds in uh, football. It's going to be fun to break down, going to be fun to watch, and it's going to be absolutely fireworks on Saturdays in the Coliseum. All right. Thank you, Max. Great break there. Sean, you see that? That was real work right there. You're just, you, you just tell jokes. I just uh, wow. I was just trying to sack the quarterback. I don't even know what he was talking about. No. I mean, I mean from, from a defensive perspective, when I look at that and what Max is saying, what makes it, I think, hard in the run game is when you pull those tackles, not only are you know, you're getting a, some big bodies moving in, in, in some ground, you're changing all the gaps up for the defender. You're changing – gap responsibilities, might be technical, but gap responsibilities for linebackers, gap responsibilities for those corners who have to come in or safeties who've got to come into the box. And, and it, that changes everything for, and I, and, I, and I love that that's part of the scheme because not only with that, then you mix in the quarterback running around and that, that, that gives the defenses nightmares. The worst, uh, the worst thing an offense can do to a defense is to get them to second guess. Because once you're second guessing, you're playing slow. And when you're playing slow, you're not reactive to the ball. When you're not reactive to the ball, touchdown. So with the plays that Max just described, the GG or, or, or the guard and tackle pull, that alone as, as uh, Sean just said, your gap changes. So if you're in a cover three concept as the middle linebacker, you have a gap. Soon as that guard pulls, you now have backside C gap. But they also brought a tackle. So now you have 
C gap, and you have to box him back into your additional. All types of problems yeah. you're creating. And then you just play action it, and then and you're then stuck you there frozen. Yeah. And then you pull it and, after and you And because came of up. everything you guys are saying, the re your defensive coordinators don't do as much, exactly. which is awesome for us as the quarterback because then we get cleaner pictures and easier throws, and so it's a whole cycle that just feeds exactly. itself. When, when a defense is forced to remain in man now because man is the only way you can guarantee there's a body on a body, now the trick plays work. Now the double moves outside work. Now the deep shots that we want to take work forces the defense to soften up. Here's a little handoff for 40 yards now since you're playing off. And that's the possibilities we have, especially with this coach. All right, great stuff, guys. We have more guests to come. Let's strike up the band, though. All right, thank you. All right, please welcome to the stage the president of the University of Southern California, Carol Folt. Thank you. Oh, oh, yeah. Right in the middle, please. You got to go in the middle between all these between all these big guys. Wow. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Fight on! Fight on! Okay, first quiz. How many of you knew exactly who we were going to have as our new coach? Zero. <laughs> With inside source. How many of you have had a huge smile on since that moment that you learned? We are so excited to be welcoming Lincoln Riley here as the new coach. Um, and I know that you're all here to be celebrating this moment. And I'm only going to talk for about 45 minutes. So. <laughs> and I'm giving a quiz at the end. But uh, mostly, I just want to say thank you. Everybody here is here because you're people who have cared so deeply about the Trojan family. You are the Trojan family. You've been with us through thick and thin. You're here to celebrate this great moment for all of us and you've been with us through all our moments so let's just do a huge shout out to all of you who are here today with us you know this Trojan family thing is a real thing I've been talking to people today who've had their first game that they came to see when they were six years old. And I bet a lot of you could tell stories about how you grew up, you've known about this amazing place, the Coliseum, you've been part of the Trojan family in so many different ways. So I know that this is really important. And I can't be happier than to share this moment with my friend, Mike Bone. And uh, for, for two years, he's been having this dream. We've been thinking about it. Um, and it is such a great, exciting day for all of us. And it's part of a move across all of our amazing athletics and our athletes, our band, all of our different teams. We see great things ahead in every single aspect of the university and right here at home in the Coliseum. Now, we've had great, uh, I've had so many wonderful um, tributes sent to me, you know, and I was sharing that they've been, some of them just so incredibly articulate, like, wow, just wow, <laughs> one of my favorites. But people have been really sharing 
how much it means to them, and I really appreciate that. And I do understand it, and I think it's fabulous that we're here. So I just want to say thank you again. I can't wait for you to meet Lincoln. Is he in here right oh, now? Oh, yeah, he's in the back. I saw he's him back there. In. He'll be up here in a moment. <laughs> and his family, you'll meet his kids, his wife, Caitlin. Um, and they are going to be just, as you imagine, a wonderful, wonderful heart of the Trojan family. So thank you, everybody, and fight on. Fight on. All right, next to the stage is our athletic director, Mike Bone. Good job, Buster. I think we can do a little bit better than this. This is a big, big day. Now, see, now, now you're starting to get the sense of what an intensity of interest means. So we have the nation's number one band, the number one fight song, and now we have the number one coach. So, so I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you, we have all been on sleepless, sleepless nights to include Coach and his family. I'm going to ask Coach and his family to come up front here. I'd like the song program to come up front with them, please. Song program, come up. And we're going to get on our feet. And we're going to sing the fight song and let everybody understand how fun it is to be a Trojan. So please help me welcome Lincoln and his family to the song program and the number one fight song in the nation. Well, you don't have a mic. Now we got the party started. That's better. That's better. I told Coach about Tusk. And now he's starting to feel, look at that smile, Coach. He likes Tusk. He likes Tusk a lot. It's a lot of fun. But uh, 
you've heard about our partnership, the Trojan family. Uh, our faculty and staff have been amazing in their support, led by President Fulp. But uh, I'd be remiss if we didn't turn it over to our board chair, Rick Caruso, uh, the chair of our board of trustee, who's been awesome. And I'd like Rick to, to say a couple minutes about uh, their role and how excited they are. Well, thank you, Mike. I just want to say on behalf of the Board of Trustees how thrilled we are, Coach, to have you and your family. It was a, it was a big task, but this man, who's our AD, and Carol, who's our president. Where's Carol? There's Carol. They set the tone, and they were very clear. We've got the greatest university in the country. We're in the greatest city in the country. We've got the greatest president in the university world, and the greatest AD. There was only one more thing to do, is get the best and the greatest football coach in the country. And that's what this man and Brandon went after. He was identified long before he ever knew he was identified. <laughs> and I hate to tell you, you were coming here whether you liked it or not. <laughs> but I just want to say how grateful we are the confidence, because you had a hell of a program where you were at, and you didn't have to leave. But the confidence you've had in this university, in Mike, and in Carol, our fans, and the history of Trojan football, just makes us all so grateful to you and your family that you came and joined us. So God bless you. You're part of the Trojan family, and we're here to support you. Thank Take you. care, Coach. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the new head football coach for USC, Lincoln Riley. Stay right there, coach. You got the mic. Right. Just give us your reactions the last 24 hours, what your life is like, and uh, ultimately, what, what, what brought you here today? Oh, man, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's been a surreal, uh, a surreal moment, surreal day, to be honest. But uh, I am so thrilled to be here. Uh, as as uh, Chairman Caruso referenced, uh, I left a phenomenal place. We left a phenomenal place to come here. And uh, but as we got into the process, met with university leadership, it was very clear that not only do you have a great tradition uh, here at USC, great history, uh, the opportunity of, of LA, and all the different opportunities that brings. I mean, everybody knows that, that's not hard. But what you could tell was you have alignment from the top down. You know, you've got uh, a president, a board, uh, and so many people that, that want to see Trojan football back where we all believe it should be and could be. And, uh, and, and that's, that's so important, it, it takes alignment. It, it's gonna take, I said it in the press conference, I told to the team today, and I'll say it to you here, it's gonna take every one of us. Uh, it's gonna take every one of us getting out of our comfort zone, uh, and I mean, you know, I just moved my family across the country. It's out of our comfort zone, but we're here, baby. We're here, and uh, and uh, and that's you know to, to have a championship level program. That's what it takes. We got to all get out of our comfort zone. We got to all be willing to do things that we haven't done before, and we've got to all push like crazy to 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 create the the kind of program and add to the kind of program that you all have established. And we're we're so excited to be a part of it. Uh, so thankful for you, uh, you. You know, this isn't professional sports, um, and the, the support you receive in a college football program sets the tone in so many ways, and it makes so many things possible that maybe weren't possible. And so you are difference makers. If you weren't, you wouldn't be here. And I uh, look forward to, to getting to know you all, uh, to being a part of this family, and, and working our tail off for you guys. Coach, Coach, congratulations. Uh, I know you spoke about getting the former players involved. I'm one of those former players, and I, you're going to get to know me because I'm going to be sending you emails and calling you up and maybe asking for tickets. And uh, so it's, it's, it's congratulations, and, and, and hope, I'm glad you're here. Um, what I wanted to ask you is, what are you most excited about to, to get into? What do you want? What is it, what's the thing about USC football? Is it, is it, is it the recruiting? Is it the, the football, the actual getting with the players? What are you most excited about here at this USC program? Well, it's gonna uh, to, to go where we want to go. It's gonna take it all. So I think there's a there is an excitement level of all parts of 
of the recruiting, of getting to know th this university community, uh, of of you know pushing to get the facilities where we where we need them to be, and uh, getting the staff. All of those things are going to be critically important. But the most important thing, the thing I'm looking forward to the most, is getting to know the players. I mean, that's that's. We're, we all have our roles in this thing, uh, every, everybody does, and they're all important, every one of our roles is, but the most important thing is the players, yeah. and, that, and the most important thing will always be the players, so uh, no offense to you guys, I love <laughs> you guys, but, the, the, but the, the highlight of today was getting to meet with the team, now, there's no, no doubt about it, getting to finally to see those guys, to look into their faces, and uh, we'll get a chance to watch them work a little bit this week, and um, it'll be players first here. Uh, Coach. Uh, congrats again. I know you heard that a trillion times today. But, um, you know, you had an established pipeline, almost a, maybe one playoff victory and a national championship away from really having an established dynasty. And you built that program after, you know, Stoops stepped away in such a short time. What was it about USC, that one thing that made you like, yeah, this is, this is what I want to do? Oh, man, just... You know, I think the combination of timing, I think we, we were excited about a new challenge. And, but again, that's just not one that you just walk away from just because. And, uh, but I, I think everything, the combination of the, you could feel the real passion here. I mean, you could tell, I mean, you can feel it in this room right now. I mean, people, people want to see USC football back on top again. I mean, there is no doubt about it. And, uh, and I, I, I felt that from my very first conversation with our people here. And uh, again, the combination of that, this wonderful city, um, the, the history, tradition of this place, it just, I, I, think we can, I think we can build something really, really special here. And that was just too much for, for us to say no to. Coach, I'm not going to ask you for tickets like Sean. All, all I'm asking, for, let me be a fly on the wall for a quarterback meeting uh, every, every so often to, 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 to pick up a few things. Uh, but now as you have the job, what are the first couple of orders of business? Like uh, tomorrow when you hit the ground running, what's, uh, what's the first things you got to address? Yeah, you know, uh, we're going we're gonna to try to step back a little bit from the current team. They've obviously got an important game that, they, uh, that they're that they ready to go win this Saturday, and so we're going to let those guys and that staff go to work and prepare to get ready to win the game. Uh, we're going to get a chance to observe them a little this week, which is a huge advantage, just to be able to see what our roster looks like, to familiarize ourselves with some of the players on this roster. Um, and then it's, uh, it's going to be recruiting, building a staff, um, getting to know this place. Hopefully we can maybe find a house. Maybe that would be good, too. <laughs> good start. And, uh, Dr. And, uh, Rick Caruso. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell him you said that. And, uh, but no, it's, uh, there's so much to do, but that's the fun part, you know, is, is building it together and, and what a fun starting point we have, and I can't wait to see where we take it. All right, Coach, as it says on the screen, welcome to the Trojan family. You get the final word here. Tell everyone, fight on. Thank you guys again. Uh, yeah, honored, honored to be your coach. We can't wait to get started. Uh, I know I'm supposed to turn it over here to the greatest band here in the country, so you guys take us home. Fight on. Yeah. Thank, you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you.